Good morning. Good to see all those that came out to worship this morning. Let's be standing and singing the Lily of the Valley. <coughs> Church. Y'all can be seated. It's good to see all those that came out this morning. We want to uh, welcome all our visitors that came out this morning. Just glad to have you here with us and hope you receive a blessing from being in the Lord's house today. Before I go into my prayer and uh, uh, the verse I have here, uh, Danny wanted me to mention, he said Pastor Chris will forget, so he <laughs> every now and then he forgets, but anyway. Uh, we want all the men to meet up here after the service today. To, we have did it one time before, but we're going to do it again to make sure we got all our ducks in a row for upcoming uh, men's uh, revival and brotherhood that's coming up this week. Are there any unspoken prayer requests this morning? That's quite a few. That's, uh, I got a little um, thing I want to read here before I go to the uh, Bible verse. I got one verse I want to read. Um, it says uh, suffering is a universal language we can't escape pain plans go wrong troubles come our bodies wear out we live in a fallen world and sometimes the pressure paralyzes us deep ocean waters can crush a submarine made of thick steel but a little fish with its thinnest layer of skin swim there without a care in the world why aren't they crushed those those fish have an internal pressure that perfectly corresponds to the pressure from the outside. God gave them just what they need to live in these deep water places. When faced with the pressure of suffering, we don't need skin made of steel. We need a power inside us that corresponds to the, to the pressure from outside. That power comes from the presence of Jesus who lives within us. Surrounded by pressure, sense the presence of Jesus, then rest secure in him daily. I got one verse here I want to read, uh, First John, uh, verse, chapter four, verse four. It says, "You dear children, are you are are from God and have have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world." So just remember, remember that uh, when the pressures of the world seem to to surround us, God's right there with us. He never leaves us. And he's never going to forsake us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, Lord, we just uh, thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity to be in your house, Lord, to, to worship you. 
to give you praise, Lord, to give you honor and glory, Lord, for all that you've done in our lives, Lord, and all the things you're going to do, Lord. And we just give you and praise you, Lord, for the price you paid on Calvary, Lord, to give us the hope of eternal salvation through your blood that was shed there at Calvary, Lord. Father, we lift up all those uh, hands that were, all those requests that were made by hands, uplifted hands this morning, Lord. You know each and every one of them, Lord. Father, we just pray that you just be with each and every one of them, Lord. Give them give them direction, Lord. Give them peace. Give them comfort, Lord, whatever they need, Lord. Father, we just lift up those in our midst right now that are sick, Lord, and, and suffering, Lord. There are, there are many going through many different things right now, Lord. Just can just continue to be with them, Lord, give them, and give them healing and give them comfort, Lord. We pray for those in sorrow, Lord, give them comfort and strength, Lord. Wrap your comforting arms around them, Lord. And for those, Lord, that are just struggling with different things in their life, Lord, just uh, give them direction, Lord. Just show them where they need to be and help them through the, maybe the valley they're going through right now, Lord. Father, we just pray that you be the pastor this morning, Lord, as he brings your word, Lord, that you just bless him, Lord. Bless the word that he preaches this morning, Lord. And Father, we just pray that uh, if there's one here today, Lord, that needs to make a decision for you, Lord, that today may be that day, Lord. And Father, we just pray that we give you praise and glory for all things. We ask this in our most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Victory Baptist Church. Why don't you give the Lord a shout or a hand clap? Amen. Amen. It is good to be in the Lord's house. Well, listen, uh, any men in the house this morning? Amen. Men are men's revival. This Wednesday, Thursday, men only. Amen. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Are you ladies excited? You're getting them out of the house? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And then Friday night is our fish fry, and, and everyone's invited. Amen. And so uh, please come and, and enjoy the Lord Jesus this week. As, uh, us men, we're going to uh, cut into the uh, the book of Proverbs this week, and I told some other men, I think the book of Proverbs is going to cut into us, amen, and I think that'll be a good thing. So uh, please lift up our men. Uh, this coming Sunday, uh, next Sunday morning, we're looking towards having the Lord's Supper together. We're going to have communion, and so please be aware of that. Uh, also, we have, uh, this week, we have two groups meeting, uh, one Tuesday nights at 6 p.m., uh, it, it is called Healing Hearts. It's for anyone who's going through grief or sorrow, and it's for anybody just going through a time of grieving, and that they, they meet for an hour, and it's a really awesome group. Uh, our, our dear uh, sister Barbara uh, Moore leads that, and so we, we love her very dearly, and, and we also have another ladies meeting. At the same time us men are meeting, some of the women will be meeting in the back here. It's a, a strengthening group for women. And so uh, if any of you ladies are interested in that, that coming to it, uh, Sister uh, Kathy uh, Gary leads that. And so please uh, uh, be aware of that. And uh, for those of you who helped us raise up bl uh, some blankets for the homeless in downtown Charleston, uh, we have a dear friend from Sandy Circle Community Church, and his name is Kyle, and he was helping spearhead that. He raised blankets, Bibles, and he cooked food for the homeless downtown Charleston. They were able to uh, get together over 120 blankets, and uh, he said that there was still not enough. They got together over 90 Bibles, handed every Bible out, and he st said there was still not enough. And they fed uh, over 100 people that day. They, they cooked all the food they had, and he said that the need was so great. So he's going to do that again, except he's uh, asked us to partner with him in raising Bibles together, or getting Bibles. And in our bulletin, we have, uh, just, just a, as an example, they're buying large print New King James. And it is uh, to where if anyone has vision impairment, they will be able to read the word just fine. <clears throat> but he's found uh, a deal of $109 for 24 of these Bibles per case. And so we're just putting it to the church. If you'd like to help raise money towards that or, or donate towards it, or if you would just like to say, I, I'll just uh, donate a box, you know, please uh, give our church office a call and uh, we will help you uh, do that. And if you would like to come with us downtown Charleston uh, to hand those Bibles out or to minister down there, uh, please let us know that as too. Um, and we'd love to do that. Uh, also, uh, Vacation Bible School, any of y'all remember that? <laughs> we were unable to have Vacation Bible School last year. I was heartbroken, and I know a lot of kids were upset about it, but we are looking to have Vacation Bible School this summer uh, from July 11th to the 16th, 
And if you are interested in serving in that way, we will be having a meeting March 7th, right after the morning service. So uh, please, uh, in March 7th, come on out if you'd like to be a part of that. And my, my only one last thing I want to say is, uh, well, well, two things. One, uh, Danny and Keely's anniversary is today. They've been married for 34 years. <clears throat> yeah, man. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Randy said he didn't think you knew, Danny. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Keely, how's it been? 34 years. Amen. Amen. There we go, man. Well, we love you guys. And uh, I, I just want to pick on Danny for a second. And also, uh, I have really good news. Many of us have been joining in prayer for the healing of our brother Don. And uh, he was diagnosed with cancer uh, late uh, last year. And, and it was uh, many treatments, and he went in for a scan last week, and then they waited a whole week to tell you the results. The only thing that's left is scar tissue, Christian. So uh, pra praise God for that. You know, uh, man, uh, that's uh, just uh, a praise. And uh, bro Brother Don, I love you, man. And, and you and Sister Deb, God is so good. Uh, Y'all continue to lift him up. And prayer is powerful. Um, he, he has a, a checkup to, to look at those in six months to see if uh, there's been no change. So we're praying that it'll stay just scar tissue. Amen. Uh, God can do something with scar tissue, can he? Amen. Uh, but if I could, could I have any kids come down for the children's sermon at this time? Amen. Good morning, kids. How y'all doing? Well, uh, check out, look what I got here. I don't really know what these keys are for, honestly. Uh, they've been in my, my desk for like 10 plus years. I really don't know where they go, you know. But it has a really cool, like, uh, floppy thing on it. That's neat. And the first thing I thought about was just, we'll put all kind of things on our keychains, don't we? But what's, what's very important about keys, though? What's the Amen. You can open up a door or lock a door. Amen. And uh, it says, oh, and a car. Amen. It, it says in Revelation that God opens a door that no one else can open and shuts a door that no one else can shut. Amen. Uh, and, and I like that. And he, uh, Jesus also said that he gave us the keys where? To heaven. Amen. And you know what that key is? That's Jesus. Jesus is that key. Um, I have an uncle, and he took his little grandson fishing one day, and he had uh, something similar like this, and he drove a big pontoon boat. Y'all know what those boats look like? They're really big, and you can have a cookout on it sometimes. They have a shelter on it. Well, they were fishing. Amen. Yeah, you could put a crew on there, and, and so they were fishing, and then my uncle said, all right, it's not a pirate boat, buddy. We don't want to do that, you know, and um. That's old times, you know, and uh, so uh, they were fishing, and then he said, all right, it's been a few hours, it's time to go home, and so he looked for his keys, and he couldn't find them to crank it up. He looked at his grandson, and he says, uh, Rudy, do you know where the keys are? And Rudy just smiled and said, keys go bloop. <laughs> yeah, he threw it, he threw the keys in the water. You know what he had to do? He had to paddle that pontoon boat <laughs> until someone saw him struggling, amen. That's real bad when you don't got a key to crank that engine, isn't it, you know? Um, amen. Amen, girl. Yeah. She's, she's giving us good instruction. I don't know if y'all are listening to this, but if you're a grandkid, don't touch the keys. Amen. Uh, do you know what he did with his keys, though? He put a float on it so that if that ever happened again, they would just rise to the top. But I'll, I'll tell you kids something. You know, life's hard. Have y'all figured out life's hard? Jesus makes it way easier. He's the key to life. He really is. And I love you kids, and I think that's sound wisdom. Don't touch your parents' keys. Amen. And uh, <laughs> uh, Amen. Jack, that's a life jacket. 
Amen. <laughs> Did y'all hear the gospel he's preaching? Jesus is like a life jacket. Amen. I, I, man, that is some good stuff there. Boba. And, uh, but uh, I, I love you kids. Let's pray and continue the worship. Lord Jesus, thank you for these children. And Father, I thank you that you have given us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And Lord, I thank you so much for every heart, mind, and soul here. Lord, bless these children and bless their parents and caretakers, Lord, as we continue to worship you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, kids. Let's be standing for Victoria. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we could come to this time, this portion of the service, Lord, in which we give back to you. Father, might we lift you, lift up to you our hearts and give you the best worship that you deserve. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
different person we are from before and then after. <laughs> oh, Marty, <laughs> he said, pray for the children, and uh, amen. <laughs> uh, if you would, go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to the book of Joshua, the book of Joshua that is uh, right after the first five books of the Bible, uh, right after uh, Deuteronomy, the book of Joshua, uh, chapter 10, Joshua chapter 10. And we're going to read verses 6 through 15 this morning. Joshua chapter 10, verses 6 through 15. And when you get there, say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think most of y'all are there. Joshua chapter 10, starting at verse 6. And this is... An extraordinary moment in the life of the Israelites as they are obtaining the land, the promised land that God had promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of Israel. And the men of Gibbon sent to Joshua at the camp of Gilgal, saying, Do not forsake your servants. Come up to us quickly, save us and help us. 
For all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the mountains have gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. Joshua therefore came upon them suddenly, having marched all night from Gilgal. So the Lord routed them before Israel, killed them with a great slaughter at Gibbon, chased them along the road that goes to Bathuron, and struck them down as far as Azka and Mechida. And it happened as they fled before Israel and were on the descent of Beth Haran that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them as far as Azka, and they died. There were more who died from the hailstones than the children of Israel killed with the sword. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered them from the Amorites before the children of Israel. He said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still in Gibbon and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenged themselves from their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. And there has been no day like that before or after it, that the Lord heeded the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned and all Israel with him to the camp at Gilgal. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you for the testimony and the witness of your people, Israel, and the ups and downs of their relationship with you. Father, the the many uh, times at war and battle, uh, through death and darkness, through hurt and pain, Father, you were with them the whole way. And Lord, you were leading them. And Father, we also face our own battles today. Lord, our battles aren't with shield and sword, but our battles are with the mind and the heart and with his flesh. And Father, I want to pray for every weary soul and burdened person who's just tired of fighting. And Lord, might you tell them today that you are still the God who fights for us. That you're still the God who stands in between us and darkness. And Lord, you're still the God who can make the sun stand still. I thank you so much for this time In this moment, we can worship you in this way. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said before, this is a remarkable and extraordinary moment in the life of the Israelites and Joshua. Joshua was there to fulfill the Lord's calling. Joshua was not there to obtain riches or glory for his name. He was not there for a possession for himself. God called Joshua to be their leader in a time of great conflict and war to obtain the promise and the gift that he was going to give them and that he was, uh, he'd promised them long ago to give them to their ancestor Abraham. And Christians, whether you believe it or not, you are also a part of that covenant that God made with Abraham all those years ago that he would not just bless Abraham's descendants, but all of the world would be blessed by what God would do through Abraham's ancestors and uh, and his people, Israel. Now, uh, church, I think it's quite amazing how the Bible is set up. The Old Testament is in what language? Hebrew. And uh, we know from understanding that God said it would be for the Israelites and to the Gentiles. Well, guess what the New Testament's in? Well, Greek. I just think that's amazing that the Old Testament representing the language of uh, uh, Abraham's ancestors, and now the Greek, the New Testament, representing, well, us. I love, whoever put this Bible together is a genius, amen? Just a genius. It's so beautiful, amazing, how it is all placed together. And in this moment, Joshua asked one thing of God to make the day longer so he could get accomplished what needed to be accomplished. Now, I know everyone here uh, has probably asked for a little bit more time, amen? In some measure, way, shape, or form, we've all wanted just a little bit more of a day, a little bit more time. How many of you have ever lived like a moment where you said, I wish this day would never end, amen? 
Now, I know a lot of you students out there have sat in class and it really felt like the day would never end. Amen. There are moments in life that we wish would be very short and there are moments in life that we wish would just be a little longer. But there's no matter who I've talked to near the end of their days, they would always say, I just wish I had a little bit more what? Time. Amen. Joshua asked for something that only God could give. Are you praying in that measure? Are you praying and asking God and talking to him and asking him for things that only he can give? I think often we pray for things that we can obtain ourselves. And so we'll pray to him and ask for permission for something that sometimes we're already going to do. But I, I want to ask you, are you praying in such a way that are you praying that for things that only God can do? Because Joshua, this is the way he prayed. I heard a pastor once say, God is more eager to answer our request than we are to ask. And I think that might be more true than we know. Uh, Joshua was placed in this moment to bring his people in a land that they were going to have conflict and war. And the only thing that was going to deliver them was not the strength of their arms, but the strength of their Lord. Now, there's no one stronger than God. Amen. Not, not a one. And God's weakness is still stronger than our greatest strength, Christian. And God bears no weakness. Uh, we have an understanding here. I think all of us want more time. If we got an extra day in the week, we'd still waste that. Let's just be honest. Amen. If the Lord answered some of our prayers, and I've heard people talk, I was like, I just wish I had one more day in the week. No, you'd fill that up too. You'd, you'd waste it some way, shape, or form. We would let that slip by as well. I don't think we need more time or more days. What we need is more direction, passion, and direction. That's what we really need. Because Jesus, he was only in public ministry for how long? Like three years. And Jesus did more with those three years that many people could ever do with several lifetimes. And God has given us days and years. He's given us this life to do something with. And what a lot of us is lacking is direction, purpose, passion, being driven and called to something. Listen, God is always calling. The question is, are we listening? Jesus, as he walked the Sea of Galilee, he looked at some fishermen and said, follow me. He didn't say any other words that said, follow me. They heard his teaching. They saw who he was and what he was doing. and They wanted to be a part of that. Have you seen the Lord working in your life? Seen him work in your life? Well, that, that's a calling. I think a lot of us would like to maybe partner along beside God. Maybe you don't even know how to even get there. Joshua gives us a very beautiful aspect of what that would look like in our lives today. Uh, the Lord, teach us to number our days. How many of y'all have heard that in the Bible? It's attributed to Moses. It's Psalm 90, verse 12. Lord, teach us to count our days. And then we stop there, though. And actually, there's more to it. So that our hearts will be wise. What's the use of having more time if you don't know what to do with it? Amen. Well, I think we'll just get ourselves in trouble. Amen. And uh, what we'll experience is a lot of obstacles. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 57, 14, build up, build up, prepare the way, remove every obstacle from my people's way. That was one of, John, uh, one of Isaiah's messages. Prepare the way, move every obstacle out of my people's way. There are some things some obstacles in our lives that are preventing us from moving into God's call. Is that a true thing? I think the worst kind of obstacle, though, is the ones that we build ourselves. Have you ever built your, your own obstacle? And you're like, I don't know why I can't hear God. I don't know why I can't get past this point. It's because we need to do some dismantling in our own lives to deconstruct some, some things that are preventing us from uh, listening and hearing God. Uh, how many of y'all remember that thousand-year flood we had several years back? Some of us feel like we've been going through it again. Amen. <laughs> it's been rained a good bit, hasn't it? And I, I distinctly remember that Sunday after that thousand-year flood that we had, and there was actually some bridges collapsing in areas. Do you remember this? It literally created some obstacles for us. And 
I was uh, very, well, we should have church uh, and, and no matter what. You know, that, that was my mindset. We should all, if, if it's a Sunday, we should be gathering and worship. And I remember it was pouring and, and, and there was water all in the yard. There's all over the roads. And I looked at my wife and, and she said, are you sure about service this morning? I was like, well, baby, you know, I think we should have church until Jesus comes back. And she goes, all right, you know. And I was like, well, check Facebook and, and check out our, our Pentecostal brothers and sisters down the road. Because if they're having church, well, us Baptists need to be in church too. Amen. <laughs> Because, right, amen, because they are passionate and, and it, it shows in their lives they're going to have church. And when it's hunting out the door, she says, uh-oh, honey. I was like, what? She says, they pulled out. I was like, what? And, and so we, I think we were one of the only churches that had service that morning. And only if you know, a few people showed up. And I, I feel so bad because a dear sister's car was floating down uh, <laughs> East Church Street, you know. And um, maybe we shouldn't have had service that morning. Because the pastor, he was having trouble even getting to the church. I decided to be smart and come down, uh, come up Harristown. And as I was uh, going along, you know, I drive, I believe in a limitless God. So I <laughs> sometimes I drive a little faster than I should. So I'm just trying to get the church and because uh, I didn't know about Betsy Hole and I was worried about some areas. And so I wanted to take the straightest road first. And well, uh, as I was driving along, all of a sudden I'm in a lake. Water flies up on both sides of the car, and all I see is water on my hood. Now, you all know that that large traverse I drive, right? The water was up near the hood, and I slowly started to back the car up, praying that it would still work and drive. And I was like, Lord, thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, thank you, Lord. Have you ever, you know, done that? Amen. And so right as I got it to where I could turn it around and do a three-point turn to try to find another way to church, there was this guy in his yard sitting in a little, like, little chair with an umbrella. And he was literally watching everybody <laughs> drive into this water. And then and I, he didn't have like a number sign saying 10 or 9 or 8, you know. I know I scored a solid 10, you know, the way I hit that thing, you know. And, uh, but I was like, I've got to, like, I still haven't talked to that fellow, but he was just sitting there watching. I don't know how many people run right into this obstacle, this water that could have just taken them out, you know? And, and Christians, we should, like, warn our brothers and sisters, amen, of, of traps and obstacles ahead. But there are some things that we can't even see ourselves, but the Lord sees, and he wants to do something about it. And he's calling us, he's trying to get our attention with something to spare us. And there's just some things we don't want to listen to them, you know. There, we just get wrapped up into things. We get so excited and happy. Um, I think the worst experience I ever had with my youngest child, Allie, is when we went to the aquarium when she was about three, I think she was three, a fresh three-year-old, I believe. And Jamie and Kate watched the mermaids, and I was like, we're going to look at the penguins. And so me and Allie went to check out the penguins, and there was this tunnel that you could crawl into and stand up and you were amongst all the penguins. It was a glass shell that protected you from wildlife, amen, but she crawled in there as other kids going around, and, you know, we had her in a, uh, a portable stroller, you know. Those are the best things in the world because you lock them down, and they're there. You don't need a leash. You don't need the crowd, you know, crowd, come here, you know, because they're locked in. But she just looked at me, and so innocently she says, tunnel. Okay, baby, you know, you know, and I... <laughs> <laughs> and then that was it. She went in that tunnel. And I couldn't get her back out of it. And no matter what I did, I would run to one side. I was like, Allie, come here. And she goes, ah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, it was like she'd go on there. I had to run around. I was like, come here, Allie. She said, ah, oh, yeah. I'm, tunnel, penguins, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and so she was hanging out with the penguins. I, I waited until Jamie and Kate came back. I was like, Kate, go in there and flush her out, <laughs> you know. And so I ran on the other side. I'm trying to grab her. And then as soon as I almost put a hand on her, she says, no, 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 don't take me, no, no, no. And I was like, oh, Lord, people are going to think I'm trying to snatch a kid. And um, it's my own kid. She didn't want to come out. I wanted to get out of there. I wanted to go home. We finally got her in there, and when I buckled her back into there, it was like we put her in prison. Her, her back arched, and her feet were touching the ground, so I had to actually... Uh, you know, 
lift her up like a uh, crazy person, you know, and uh, like a, you know, just dr driving her all. And she screamed the whole way. She yelled, my tunnel, my tunnel, all the way out. I passed some old men sitting on a bench, and he goes, I'm sorry, brother. You know, and I was like, you know, I'm just trying to get out of there. And it, it dawned on me, though, I was God in that scenario. And many of us were like my daughter in that tunnel. He's trying to get you. We don't want him to get us because we think where we're at's good, but it's not. There's some places that we go and, and put ourselves that God never wanted us to be in the first place. God has called us into his walk, into his life. Joshua, he went from Egypt all the way across the Jordan. And this is not the first time Joshua's been across that Jordan. Joshua started out along with the, all the other Israelites in Egypt as a slave. And he watched God do wonders and miraculous miracles. But this is what set Joshua apart from all the other children of Israel. You know, Joshua is not even his name. Moses gave him that name, Joshua. Um, Joshua's first name, it says in Numbers 13, was uh, Hosh, uh, Hoesh, which means salvation. Moses changed it to Joshua or Joshua, which means the Lord is salvation. Do you know that Joshua is the Hebrew form of the Greek name Jesus? And Jesus' name actually means the Lord is salvation. Isn't this so curious? And, and this is what it says about Joshua. When Moses would go to the tent of meeting and meet with God, it says in his Exodus 33, verse 11, Moses would meet face to face and speak to God as a friend. Then he would return to the camp, but his young assistant Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the tent. Joshua did not want to depart from the presence of the Lord. That's what really set Joshua apart and, and, and Christians, where is your heart with the Lord? You see, church isn't somewhere that you go to. Church is something that you are, you bring with you. Jesus says that I am the resurrection and the life. I will send you a spirit that will live inside of you. And, and I will teach you everything that you need to understand about life, about death, about heaven, about hell, about sin and righteousness. That Holy Spirit has a relationship inside of us. And it drives us, it moves us, it grows us, it convicts us. You know, God is still the same God that at times has to break us, but understand he binds us too. Life, there will be pain. As my brother Randy, he said, nobody likes that word suffering. But I've seen so much blessing come from suffering. Look at the cross. The Lord is salvation. This is not the first time Joshua has crossed the Jordan. Joshua and another guy named Caleb was sent by Moses to spy out the land. They get over there and they see the grapes big as oranges. I mean, who would not like a grape as big as an orange? Amen. Could you imagine how big their blueberries might have been? I mean, there's this like straw, all these things that they brought back with them to show the tribe and these huge things. And then 10 out of the 12 said, yeah, but we can't take it. We can't take that land. And Joshua and Caleb was like, well, wait a minute. No, the Lord our God promises us we can take them. Let's go now. Let's go fight. But the 10 out of the 12 said, no, we can't do that. They're giants over there. You know what I think the first thing they ever saw when they went across the Jordan is they saw the walls of Jericho and said, nope. You know, one of the first things Joshua did when they got over across the Jordan is God led them to Jericho. And they did not attack the wall. They worshiped God for six days. And on the seventh day, God brought the walls down. I think that a lot of our problems and a lot of walls and obstacles in our life can be solved with worship. But the problem is we're worshiping all the wrong things. We're worshiping the wrong people. There is only one God that deserves our worship, our adoration. Everything inside of us is Jesus. The Lord is salvation. Who is your salvation? Who are you running to? Who are you trusting to bring the walls down in your life? It has to be Jesus. Not only this, but they, they went and they 
uh, they claimed Jericho, then they claimed this little place called Ai, and then they got to a little ways, and I love how this is set up, because as we looked at verse 6 in chapter 10 of Joshua, there was these men from uh, Gibbon, men of Gibbon, I guess they would be called uh, Gibbonites, they were crafty. Because they heard about Jericho and they heard about Ai and they sent some of their people as a delegation. But they were all dressed in rags and they looked really poor. And they went to the Israelites and to Joshua and they said, listen, we are people from a distant land. And we, we, we've been through some things and we'd like to make a treaty with you. And so the Israelites, being a, a, you know, serve a God of mercy, they looked at them and they understood their plight because they were also a people from a distant land and they've been through some things. So they made a treaty with these Gibbonites who were in a ruse and after they found out, they were mad. They said, Joshua, we should destroy these people. Like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We made a covenant with the Lord God and we shall not touch these men. We shall not harm a hair on their head. We shall not do it. And so they uh, became, a, uh, they took the Gibbonites in. Have you ever helped somebody and then they were deceiving you while you were helping them? Ain't that something? A, a guy came to the church for help one time and so uh, I took him to the handy mart. I said, he needed gas. I was like, hey, man, uh, can I buy you some food? He's like, oh, I love chicken sandwiches. He's like, me too. And so bought him some food and put some gas in his car. And he goes, oh, you can just give me money. I'll put that. I was like, no, man, I got it. And I, I put it on my own card. You know, I put it in there. I put, uh, put the, uh, the, the hose in the tank. And I began to try to put gas. And it wouldn't go because it was a full tank. And every time it clicked, I just looked at him and smiled. And he was just like, he'd shake his head. So I tried it. I was like, maybe it's not working. So I tried it again. I knew stuff was coming out. I looked at him. He just shook his head. And I was like, uh, hey, buddy, what's going on? I can only put 17 cents in here. And he said, preacher, I'm an alcoholic. And I can't help it. I just want money so I can drink. I think some people would take that moment and say, why well, ain't going to help nobody like that ever again? How wrong of us. How would we ever hold anybody to a standard in which we ourselves put ourselves to because we have come into contact with a God who has called us and we listened and we came. And what I want to be is I want to be the mouthpiece and the hands and the feet of that God who is Jesus, our great deliverer, so that they can understand the kindness, the mercy, the compassion, and the love in which he had for us sinners. Because we all are broken and we are in much need of restoration. And he is not giving us a land that can be cultivated by uh, some type of tools. He's calling us into an eternal kingdom that cannot be seen now, but there will be one day it will be very presently seen a kingdom that is unshakable, unending, and cannot be destroyed. That kingdom is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Are you a part of that kingdom? Because Joshua, when he came to the rescue, the Gibbonites who lied to him, who tricked him, he came in there and he brought the full fury of his faith because he walked in faith. God said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Meditate on my word. Spend time with it. Any of y'all got a Bible out there? Any of y'all? Yeah, amen. I love the I don't know if you can tell I love the Bible. There's just some things that we should really do with the Bible, though. And, and there's just five things. And just repeat this after me, all right? Hear it. How many of y'all like hearing the word of God? Amen. We love hearing the word of God. We must hear it. But here's the second part. Read it. We got to read it. There's some of us, I, I believe that there's some of us who are wanting others to read it for us. And that's okay to a certain extent, but eventually if you call upon the name of the Lord, he's going to want you to know more about him. And the best way you'll ever get to know about, more about him is actually reading the word that he has given us. So we must hear it. We must read it. And here's the third one. Say it with me. Study it. 
Oh, Pastor Chris, that sounds like school. No, no, it's not. There's no tests, I promise. I'm so thankful when we get to heaven, uh, Jesus is not going to say, all right, tell me all 66 books of the Bible in order. Aren't you glad? He's not going to ask us to spell Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. He's not going to make us do that. Because we are not saved by what we do. We are saved by what has been done through Jesus Christ. We must hear it, read it, study it. Here's the fourth one. Oh, man, here's a big one. Memorize it. Listen, I know that many of us would rather hear it, read it, amen, study it. But when we get to a point when we are memorizing, Psalm 119, verse 11, I will hide your word in my heart so that a, I may not sin against you. How many of y'all, you know, it's good to always be prepared. Some of, some of you are always prepared. You have your concealed weapons permit. Amen. Any of you all out there, don't raise your hand. <laughs> Amen. But uh, but there's all because you're prepared. You're a prepared person. Are you a prepared Christian? Have you memorized the, the, the most powerful weapon on this planet is the word of God? Because it can change a heart. Christians, we're sending rovers to Mars to collect dirt. But we still haven't cured homelessness and poverty. We still can't feed the hungry. We still can't create a pill that will restore a broken heart or a sorrowful spirit. Because it's not found in anything that you can find here. It's only found in Jesus. The Lord is salvation. That is it. And so here's the fifth thing. Meditate. Think on the word. Roll it around in your head as much as possible. Because there will be moments that our worlds will stop. Because as Joshua, as he went into battle in this epic moment, he didn't want it in. God spoke to him. And they traveled all night. And, and some of us, we get really fatigued. We, we get fatigued walking to the refrigerator, walking back to the couch. I mean, we'll get very fatigued. They traveled all night and then went to battle. That's some epic level things right there. They traveled all night, went to fight, and then Joshua said this prayer to the Lord. Make the sun stop so we can finish this. There will be times in our lives where it will be like our world stops. And I'm sorry to say, but most of the times when our world stops, it seems like it's the worst moment. Like the day just will end. Like the hour seems like forever. But I'll tell you, just past this pandemic and, and past all these things that we've been through in 2020, there have been moments that I could go back to that I've seen God work. And I can literally want to go back to that moment just so I can experience how God was working so that that day would have lasted a little longer. So I would have understood the impact and how important that moment was. We have seen people come to Christ Jesus during a pandemic. That's amazing. We've seen men and women turn their lives over from substance abuse. That's amazing. That's a miracle. And there's moments we want to stay in. And we're like, God, make this day last just a little longer. But I'll tell you this. There will be a day when time will be no more. No more darkness. No more pain. No more suffering. It will all be bound in Christ Jesus. You have to understand that the weapons he has given us are not just for flesh and blood. But as it says in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 through 6, For the weapons of our warfare are not of flesh and blood, but they have divine power to destroy strongholds in every proud obstacle. Have you allowed Jesus to tear down some obstacles for you? Because he desperately wants to. You know, our God is such a merciful and wonderful God. He's not going to do it until you... Not like me, I drag my daughter out of the tunnel. Amen. I think some of y'all want God to just drag you out of the tunnel. But here's the thing, if he dragged you out, I want to ask you an honest question. If I'd let my daughter go when I got her just halfway out, would she have continued? 
she would have ran right back in there. And then I would have cried out, God, help me. See, God wants you to want him in your life. And I pray that we will all want him more than anything. Would you please stand as we go to the Lord in prayer? Lord Jesus, I thank you, I praise you for this moment, God, and how you will work. Father, I ask that if there are some strongholds here this morning, Lord, that those walls would come tumbling down just as you did at the day of Jericho. Lord, you still can make the, stun, the sun stand still. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
all sing so good. Um, th thank you all so much for coming uh, to worship the Lord Jesus this morning. Uh, please come back tonight at 7. We'll do it again. Now listen, all you fellows, we're supposed to meet right over here, amen, and talk about some food. Is, is that right? Uh, and I don't know who caught the fish, amen. I just know we're going to eat the fish, amen. Is that right, Randy? Uh, but please be in prayer for Randy and Pam. They will be traveling to Texas starting this Friday uh, as they will go and celebrate uh, Miss Pam's mother, Miss Chloe, who has gone home to be with the Lord and continue to lift up uh, also her stepfather, Brother Ron, and just lift that whole family up during this time. We love you guys so much and we'll pray that uh, for a safe trip there and a safe trip back. But uh, would you all pray with me one more time? Uh, Lord Jesus, uh, Father, as you work in the battles of our life, Father, might we keep our eyes on you. Lord, bring us back tonight for uh, another time of worship. And Lord, be with all of us, Lord, as we go out and be the light that you've called us to be. We pray all this in Jesus' name. All God's people say, amen. amen. Thank you all so much.